Space Marines. Revered in their own universe. But how would they fare in another? Okay, but which universe? Ah, okay. Pokemon. Rigged. So we'll need a strong Pokemon. No, 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 no. The strongest Pokemon. Charizard. Look at that legend. Almost unbeatable. <laughs> oh my goodness. Nope. Nowhere near strong enough. Space Marines are eight foot tall and almost a thousand kilograms. Whatever takes these guys on, it needs to be an unstoppable monster. It needs to be able to damage a space marine. <coughs> damage a space marine. It needs to be invincible. I think we've found it. There's only one contender for the job. First things first, we need a base for this diorama. Into the secret warehouse of hoarded garbage. Here we go, these'll do. I knew these would come in useful. Close, but it's too small. Too, no, that's useless. There we go. Next, we need a stick. So it's into the chaos realm. Excellent. Oh, uh, I'm making a video. Can I, uh, can I have that? Okay. Back to the base. We'll sketch out a rough plan. Grassy, swampy area here, I think. A few scattered rocks. A tree here. Rock here. A space marine here on a hill. Perhaps I should start a fine art channel. Lord have mercy on the fine people watching this. So we need the ground to slope upwards toward the tree I think. Before we do anything else, we'll build that area up with some foam. This is a bit thick, so once it's cut to size, we'll have to half the height. We'll use the hot wire to trim it along the pencil line. Just this once, can we all do him a favour and pretend it wouldn't have been a thousand times quicker to use a knife? Snug as a bug. Now for the height, it needs to go from here to here. We'll half that with a knife. Kitchen variety. Careful, careful, careful. And the grand reveal. Tragic. Perfect. To fix these two together, we'll use this wizard's cream. Squidge it on. Give it a moment for pity's sake. And it's stuck. Nice. Now we need to shape the slope. Nothing special, it's just rough for now. Brush off the flakes. And now we'll deal with these unsightly crevices. A touch more wizard's cream. Smooth it out. Give it a wipe. Beautiful. Here we have the treasure we stole from the Chaos Realm. We'll mark its landing spot and then dig where necessary. It doesn't need to be neat. We'll be covering all of this shortly. Ah. Fits perfectly. Get in, you little. Another squirt. Like a glove. And now the big rock. Its purpose will become clear later on. 
we've got a few leftover sprues from the bits box and there's just enough here to make one marine snippity snip you where on earth Ugh, ow. come here got him time to remove the mold lines let's put him into position something like this i think those leg poses seem a bit off so we'll adjust those now we need a little bit of warp fire to gently heat the plastic so we can bend it into place slight adjustment a touch more heat another small adjustment brother brother oh bugger look at that sorry squire nearly burnt your ass off for the foot we'll need to conduct a bit of surgery with the help of milliput we'll fill in the gap and then smooth with a wet brush As this one will be visible, we'll add some tread to the bottom of this boot. Sit tight, little one. Onwards to the covering. We'll need Mod Podge, Polyfiller, Fine Sand, Paint, and coconut quar. This is a recipe I saw on one of North of the Borders videos, although on this occasion I've added the coconut quar for a bit more varied texture. As you can see, it's a very precise recipe. Random amounts of everything. The key ingredient here is stirring everything thoroughly. Remove these kinder eggs. Looks good. Mmm. Delicious. Now we'll add this twig down here in the corner. Hopefully, once it's done, it'll look like tree roots. a little bit big let's snap a piece off on to the paste a very generous helping I'm applying a fair amount of pressure making sure it fills all of the gaps pop the twig on and seal it in forever More and more paste. Make sure we get this sneaky little gap. Now in the swamp zone, we need a couple of pools, so I'll form those now while it's still wet. Let's also seat Tinkerbell. We'll coat the edges as well. We don't want any foam exposed. The rocks next. We don't need to go overboard with these. Sprinkle a few here, a few there. He's looking relaxed. We'll use some PVA to seal them in. We'll mix the PVA with water so it flows a bit easier.
onto the sprouts, we'll need some green stuff. Remember, you should never use this stuff without safety goggles. I am of course wearing mine, so it's full steam ahead. Imagine mixing at this speed without goggles. Chaos. We've got the ball. With some more shaping, this will eventually be the head. Now, I don't have a handy round tiny mouth hole making tool on me right now. So I've had to improvise with an Allen key. There we go. Can you see it? I rolled another piece out to craft the unmistakable bell sprout pout. Push that on. There we go. The viney body next. It's a relatively straightforward shape, it just involves a lot of bell sprout break dancing. These toes look rough now, but we'll tidy those up once it's dried. As you can see, after all that work, I accidentally made a giant. I won't disclose how long that abomination took him to make. Let's delete that monstrosity. Four bodies, eight leaves, one, two, three, four heads in my freezer. As for the general layout, I'm thinking one here, one here, another here, and then one down here. This fellow is the villain of the piece, using his vines, made from green stuff, to hold the space marine in place. Cut to size, we'll adjust and then glue them in place. It's about time we got the head on, poor guy. Brother, where am I? And the retaliatory weapon, the plasma pistol. Stay right where you are, heretic. Then the last resort arm. If all else fails, we drop the grenade. Shoulder pads, we definitely need some battle damage on there. He has been fighting bell sprouts after all. Speak of the devils, we need to put their pieces together and for that we'll need resin. Now, if you do mix these wrong, there is a small, tiny, 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 tiny chance that a cat dies. I know, I know, I know, I know. Luckily, I am a professional. See? We're f Oh god. Uh, yeah, that, that's a shame. Anyway, moving swiftly on, we'll add a little bit of ink, just so I can see what on earth is going on here. Now we wait for it to begin to harden. Roughly this consistency. For a snug fit, we need to level the neck where the head is to sit. A quick snip. A bit of glue for instant hold. And then a small amount of resin to seal the deal forever. Clean off the excess. Ta-da! The strongest Pokemon that ever lived. So this sprout will need to be standing tall, its feet rooted in the ground, holding the Space Marine in place. AK's muddy ground will do the trick. We take a blob, place it down and then plant. Plant. 
one for each foot. And now we just... How long? 24 hours. Okay. Right, so plan B. Super glue and bicarbonate of soda. Sprinkle that on and it's hard as a rock immediately. Look at him. Standing proud, dominating the battlefield. Let's get the others in place. Meet the nibbler. The witness. PTSD like no other. And the victim. There's only so far invincibility can take you. This one was far too eager, and now he's suffering the consequences. A blob of glue and a drop of resin, and they're friends forever. Now we need some kind of carnage coming out the back. An explosion of sorts. I was inspired by Maverick Nicholson and his exploding space marine head. So we need to go over to Deadly Print Studio and grab their ground explosions bundle. There's quite a variety of explosions to choose from. I'm getting the 3D print files, but you can also get the physical versions from there. I printed a variety of sizes, although the smallest one failed. Darwinism. Let's pop them off. You know, for a dusty 3D printer and resin that's two years out of date, that's not too bad. Straight into the lemonade. He thinks if he calls it lemonade, then he won't get brain damage from the fumes. Into the mouth of Sauron to be absolved of its sins. Freshly cleansed, let's see how it fits. Okay, that is massive. Let's trim it down. Now we're getting somewhere. We need to attach it here, so let's prepare the hole. Ever so carefully. <laughs> Onwards, brother. Never surrender. Stuff some Millie put in there, push together, and then mold as best we can. That's not too bad. While we've got this heretical device out, let's melt that foot and add some more battle damage to this shoulder pad. Beautiful, but we're not done yet. Brother, no. Only joking. Thank the Emperor. Nah, I'm not. <laughs> Look me in the eye, brother. Muddy ground back again alongside some 3D printed plants. We'll dot a few of these around. Easy peasy. Let's gunk up this battle scar while we're here. Time to put the final bell sprout body into position. Something like that. In the swampy area, we need a few grass tufts. Tall grass, the kind you shouldn't walk in if you don't like bell sprouts. Take a large paintbrush, snip a few bristles off. Squirt out a blob of hot glue and then push the bristles into it. Done. Then we bury the base with muddy ground. 
onwards to priming we'll start with black around the outside with a special focus on the back of the diorama next up we need grey a quick covering over the centre ground before spraying from above with white making sure we get the explosion covered Once that's dry, it's step one. Cover the majority of the ground with watered down brown paint. Step two, realize it doesn't look right. Step three, do it again with the correct brown. On to the plants. Came in green this time. We need to thin it down so we can see the shades underneath. We also need to pick out this special character. It does look somewhat familiar. Khaki for the reeds. Now it's finally time to colour up the sprouts. We still want them to retain their cartoonish image, so it's basic brown for that gangly body. A vibrant green for the leaves. and then the worst colour on earth for the head. Two thousand thin coats later. I've mixed some light pink with a flesh tone for those world famous lips. A turquoise blue for the man himself. quite vibrant as we need him to stand out among the sprouts. Onto a wash made from blue and black ink, both from Vallejo. Before a quick dry brush of silver to pick out the battle damage and metallify the plate. Right, he's getting carried away. Metallify, that isn't a word, is it? Gold for the trim and front detail followed by an Agrax Earthshade wash, a dry brush of lighter blue, and then a fine brush to resurrect some of the details. Brother. Oh, my apologies. Next up is a gift from the gods, a sponge and charred brown. Dab it on over the battle damage and anywhere else you want to look worn. Within those dabbings we'll add some silver as if we've exposed the material beneath. Let's crucify this wound. Crucify? For the plasma pistol, it's 10 to 20 layers of Nuln oil. Before a base of Temple Guard blue, and then a mental breakdown. Let's brighten this plasma blast. First with Arctic white, and then a progressively more intense blue dry brush. Darker the further we are from the center. Our 
I'm not entirely happy with that. Blue is a notoriously difficult colour to work with. I'll keep prodding it throughout. I mixed some more resin earlier, added some pinky purple paint and allowed it to cure a bit. This will represent the strongest move in the Pokemon universe. Acid direct from a Bellsprout. All the work we did on that foot. Thanks Bellsprout. A blob for the culprit. Grey for the rocks. Adventurous. A light skin tone dry brush for the tree and its roots. Just so it stands out against the surrounding soil. Now we need some roughage. Grass, grass, stuff, flowers, leaves, grass. A drop of PVA glue. And then step one, the stuff or sponge to be more precise. To make this, you just take a sponge and chuck it in a blender. Die, sponge. And there you go, bushes. More PVA to plant the flowers. Wait for it to dry. Hard as a sponge covered in dry PVA. We need the green gang now. And a dry brush, lots and lots of dry brushing. Getting progressively lighter each time. Let's admire our handiwork before being rudely interrupted by a box of grass. We'll need some of that. Some leaves. Mix it together. PVA. And sprinkle away. Bit too much on there, so we'll shake off the excess. I can't tell you how many times I envisaged dropping that while shaking it. Terrifying. Back to the swampy puddles. Muddy ground's depressed cousin, wet ground. This, once it's dry, should still look wet. Handy for a puddle. This rogue dribble inspired me to try a thin down coat across the entire swamp area. We'll see what happens with that once it's dry. Hmm, not a lot. So much for science. Onto this sacred stone. A quick brightening dry brush. We'll certainly need one of these. Let's affix it in place with PVA. Wait for it to dry. And then a Thonian camel shade over the whole thing. Another dry brush, green this time. We need to hide the leaf stone as it's just a subtle detail on this diorama. Let's finish these puddles. First, we need to dry brush the blue light, catching on the ground from the explosion above. Then, the appropriately swampy resin. We'll drop a Thonian camel shade in to colour it. Pour it on. Push it around. It'll find its own level. Wait for it to cure and then we need the ripples. Did he say nipples? Varying layers of Mod Podge with plenty of time to dry in between. 
if you're wondering why it's been three weeks since the last video, all this drying time is to blame. More blue dry brushing, and then a little bit of white. We've simulated the water moving, so now let's move the reeds. We just need to squish them. Uh, like my hopes and dreams. So the puddle maintains its reflective surface, I'll cover it with hard coat. That'll dry nice and shiny. Now we're on to the last couple of details. Let's unsheath a crispy new brush. Steady. Steady. Few things make me sweat like painting the sadistic pinprick eyeballs of an angry bell sprout. We'll finish off with this little guy's citrus berry. That's a particularly ugly bell sprout, but he's got a berry, so he's doing all right. Now to seal it all up, a bowl of water and matte acrylic varnish over everything except the grass and flowers. You know, as I catch a glimpse of myself in the freshly varnished head of a bell sprout, I wonder if what we've done here is right. I need to go and have a sit down and think about what we've done here. So I shall see you all next time. Thank you very much. Leave a like, subscribe. Uh, I don't know. Bye, bye, bye. Why did I make that?